Hi everyone! Today we're going to talk about how to use trigonometric substitution with a sine substitution to evaluate an integral. To complete this problem, we'll set up the problem by writing down everything we know, make our substitutions, simplify and evaluate the integral, and then back substitute to get our answer in terms of x. Let's take a look. In this particular problem, we've been asked to evaluate the integral of x squared divided by the square root of 25 minus x squared. So the first thing we need to do, since this is a trigonometric substitution problem, is identify the form of our relationship between a squared and u squared. With trigonometric substitution problems, you're always looking for something inside your integral, either in the form a squared minus u squared, a squared plus u squared, or u squared minus a squared. In this form, or with this identity here, you're looking for a as a constant and u as a term that involves the variable. So in this case, and both of them should be a square. So in our problem, we have in the denominator here under the square root sign, 25, which of course is 5 squared, and that's a constant. And we have x squared here, which is a term that involves our variable, and of course x squared is the square of x. So what we need to do is identify that we have the form here, a squared minus u squared. And from that, we need to be able to solve for a and u. If we say that 25 minus x squared is equal to a squared minus u squared, then in order to solve for a and u, we just take the square root of 25, that gives us five, and so we know that five is equal to a. To find u, we just take the square root of x squared, we of course get x, and we say that x is equal to u. So that gives us u and a in this form here. When we identify the form a squared minus u squared in our function, we know that we'll be using the substitution u equals a sine theta, and the identity one minus sine squared theta equals cosine squared theta. So our next step is plugging our values for u and a into our substitution here, u equals a sine theta. So when we plug those in, we get x equals 5 sine theta. And this is the beginning of our trigonometric substitution setup. You always want to plug u and a into your substitution here, and then you're going to solve for a couple more things before you move into substituting into the integral. The first thing you want to do is divide both sides by 5 to solve for sine of theta. So we'll get x divided by 5 equals sine of theta. From here, you also want to solve for theta. And the way that you'll do that is by taking arc sine, or the inverse sine function, of both sides. When we take arc sine of both sides, we'll get arc sine of sine over here on the right. And those two will cancel with each other, leaving only theta on the right-hand side. So what we'll get is arc sine of x over 5 is equal to theta. The last thing we want to solve for is the derivative of x, in other words, dx. So if we take the derivative of this here, x equals 5 sine theta, what we'll get is 5 times cosine theta, because the derivative of sine is cosine. So we get 5 cosine theta d theta. We're going to be substituting for x and dx back into our function inside the integral here. So those are the things that we want to make sure we solve for. We also want to go ahead and draw our right triangle for the sine substitution. So because we're using here the specific substitution u equals a sine theta, we're drawing a specific right triangle that identifies the sine relationship that we see here for sine of theta equals x over 5. So the right triangle we draw, we draw the angle theta here, we make it a right triangle like this, and with the sine, the triangle for sine, our hypotenuse is always equal to a. So we'll say a equals 5 over here. The opposite side, the opposite side from the angle over here is always u. So we get u equals x. And the adjacent side down here at the bottom is always the square root of a squared minus u squared, which in our case is equal to the square root of 25 minus x squared. So we label our three sides of the triangle like that. All the information that we just wrote out here will be really helpful to us later on in the problem when we're trying to convert our answer 
from theta in terms of theta back into terms of x. Now that we've finished the setup piece of our trigonometric substitution problem, our next step is to go ahead and make the substitutions back into our integral. So we're going to substitute in for x and dx. So in our numerator here, we have x squared. We're going to plug in 5 sine theta for x, and in our numerator here, we'll get 25 sine squared of theta, because when we plug in 5 sine theta and we square that, 5 squared gives us 25, and sine of theta squared gives us sine squared theta in our numerator. In the denominator, we have the square root here of 25 minus, again, x squared we already know to be 25 sine squared theta. That's what we had in the numerator, and that's what we get when we square our value for x. Now we want to go ahead and plug in for dx, and we know that dx here is 5 cosine theta d theta. So 5 cosine theta d theta. Now that we've made all of our substitutions and our integral is entirely in terms of theta instead of in terms of x, we just need to simplify this integral as much as possible and get it to a point where we can evaluate it. So the first thing we'll do is go ahead and um, pull out constants and we'll simplify our square root. In fact, let's go ahead and simplify the square root first. Inside our square root sign here, we can go ahead and factor out a 25. So we'll get 25 times 1 minus sine squared theta underneath our square root. And now that we have it in this form, what we can do is bring in the identity that we identified up here in the beginning. So we said that we would be using the identity 1 minus sine squared theta is equal to cosine squared theta. Well, as you can see, we've found 1 minus sine squared theta in our integral, so we can go ahead and plug in cosine squared theta for 1 minus sine squared theta, and we'll get 25 times cosine squared of theta. So now, instead of having this in our denominator, just think about having the square root here of 25 times cosine squared theta in our denominator. What we'll get when we take the square root here the square root of 25 is just 5, and the square root of cosine squared theta is cosine of theta. So now this 5 cosine theta is our new denominator. What you can see is that we'll get the 5 in the numerator and denominator here to cancel, as well as the cosine of theta, and we're just left with the integral of 25 sine squared theta d theta, that all came, of course, from our numerator here because we got the rest of this part here to cancel with our denominator. At this point, in order to simplify our integral, since we may not know the integral of sine squared theta off the top of our heads, we'll want to go ahead and perform substitution using the identity that we had before. So we have this identity up here. We can solve it for sine squared theta by adding sine squared theta to both sides and then subtracting cosine squared theta from both sides, what we end up with is 1 minus cosine squared theta is equal to sine squared theta. And we can now substitute in 1 minus cosine squared theta for sine squared theta. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and bring this constant out in front of our integral to simplify it further. So we'll get 25 times the integral of 1 minus cosine squared of theta d theta. At this point, we can use a double angle formula for cosine squared of theta, and we can plug in 1 half plus 1 half times cosine of 2 theta, which is great because we may not know the integral of cosine squared of theta, but we can easily take the integral if we get rid of that higher order or that second order trigonometric identity. So we'll get 1 minus, and then this is a formula here, cosine squared of theta is equal to 1 half minus 1 half cosine of 2 theta d theta. So we can use a formula to make this substitution. Now, if we bring this up here, we'll get 25 times the integral of 1 minus 1 half we get the minus and the minus here to turn into a positive sign, so plus 1 half cosine of 2 theta d theta. Now, if we combine our 1 minus 1 half, we'll just get 
one half plus one half times cosine of two theta. And we can actually factor out a one half. So 25 times the integral of one half times one plus plus cosine of two theta d theta means we can bring the one half out in front here and we'll get 25 halves times the integral of and let's go ahead and now separate what remains here the one plus cosine of two theta into two separate integrals so we'll get basically one d theta and then we'll separate and say plus 25 halves we have to make sure we carry over that constant times the integral of cosine of two theta d theta. So we just separated the two pieces that remain inside of our integral into two separate integrals. That allows us to easily integrate the first one. The integral of one is just the theta. So what we get is 20, 25 halves theta. That's the end of that integral plus 25 halves times the integral of cosine of two theta d theta. And at this point, all we need to do to solve for the second integral is use a u substitution. We'll set u equal to two theta, and we'll take the derivative of u to get du. The derivative of two theta is just two. And of course, we have to go and add a d theta when we take the derivative. Then when we solve this for d theta, we'll get that d theta is equal to du over two. We get that by dividing both sides by two. So now we can go ahead and make the u substitution into our integral. When we do that, you can see that we'll end up with 25 halves theta plus 25 halves times the integral of cosine of u, because we set two theta equal to u, making our substitution for d theta of du over two, we'll get du over two here. Before we take the integral, let's go ahead and bring our one half out in front. So we'll get 25 halves theta plus 25 over four, because we just bring the two out in front here. So 25 fourths times cosine of u du. And now we can easily integrate cosine of u. We know that the integral of cosine is just sine. So what we'll get is 25 fourths times sine of u. And then don't forget that we need to add plus c to account for our constant of integration. Now we just make a back substitution for u. We know that u is two theta. So our final answer in terms of theta, before we change things to be back in terms of x, is 25 halves theta plus 25 fourths times sine of two theta plus c. So now this is our final answer for the integral in terms of theta. And our last step is to change our answer to be back in terms of x, which we need to do because that's the variable that we started with originally. This is where the setup that we completed at the beginning really comes in handy because now we have theta left over in our answer here, but we've already solved for theta. We, we said originally that theta was equal to arc sine of x over five. So we can just go ahead and plug in arc sine x over five for theta. When we do that, we'll get 25 halves times arc sine of x over five for our first term here, plus 25 fourths times sine of two arc sine of x over five plus c. Our first term here, 25 halves arc sine x over five, is already as simplified as we can get it. All we need to do is simplify our second time here, second term here because we have sine of arc sine. Now, whenever you have sine of two times something, right? We have sine here of two times arc sine x over five. So let's just identify here the arc sine x over five. If we call this, let's say a, whenever you have in this case, sine of 2a, where you have two times something inside here, you can simplify that. So the formula we'll use is essentially sine of 2a is the same thing as two times sine of a cosine 
of a. So we can manipulate this and and simplify it. So we have we're left we're going to be left with just sine of arc sine. So let's go ahead and write out where we stand here. So 25 halves arc sine of x over 5 plus 25 fourths and here's where our formula comes in so we have sine of two times let's call it a so sine of 2a instead we're going to change that into two times sine of a and in our case a is arc sine of x over 5 so we have arc sine of x over 5 times cosine of uh, arc sine of x over 5 so times cosine of arc sine of x over 5 and we'll add our plus c back in here but that's how we can simplify it. the reason that that helps us is because it takes the two out and now we can easily simplify sine of arc sine and cosine of arc sine so let's go ahead and rewrite this portion of it so we'll have 25 halves arc sine of x over 5 plus 25 fourths times 2 here. We'll get the 2 to cancel in the numerator here, and we'll just be left with, again, 25 halves. Sine of arc sine, these two here, will cancel directly with one another, and we'll just be left with the x over 5. When we have cosine of arc sine, the way we simplify that is just the square root of 1 minus whatever's on the inside here. So the cosine and the arc sine go away. What's on the inside here, x over 5, we get 1 minus x over 5 squared, all of that underneath the square root sign. That's how you simplify cosine of arc sine. And I've got a table of these simplifications on my website, but cosine of arc sine is the square root of 1 minus, and then whatever's on the inside here, squared. And then our last piece is just plus C like this. So the last couple steps now, we'll have 25 halves arc sine of x over 5 plus, notice that we'll get the 5 here in the denominator to cancel and we'll be left with 5 here in the numerator. So we have 5x over 2, 5x over 2 times, and then inside of our square root sign here, let's find a common denominator. So this x over 5 squared will be x squared divided by 25. If we find a common denominator with the 1, we'll get 25 over 25 minus x squared over 25, like this, all plus c. Inside our square root sign, what we'll be left with, if we just combine these two to get a common denominator like this, right, and we say 25 minus x squared there, we're just left with 25 in our denominator. So 25 in the denominator, the square root of 25 is just 5. So we'll get the 5 in this numerator to cancel with the 5 that comes from the denominator taking the square root of 25. And that means that we're just left with 25 halves arc sine of x over 5. And then for our second term here, we'll go ahead and leave square root of 25 minus x squared. So we'll just get plus x over 2 times the square root of 25 minus x squared plus c. And that's it. That's how we take the integral of this function using trigonometric substitution and the sine substitution to find the integral of this function. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.